like old company can also be very like startup like, and then yeah. again a new company isn't startup like if it's like very old fashioned or something. Okay, and for our listeners, I may remind that the interview with Tim Olaf you can heard in episode 15, and mm. also there is a special edition of episode 15 where it's only Crazy Town interview, Crazy Town Tampere, I mean, and. Actually, yeah, thanks to Timo if he's listening because he was one of my connections, one of my biggest connections during Tribecast Summer Tour. And when, when we started talking about Tribecast Summer Tour for an episode with Kati, I was immediately invited to visit during this week, specifically because you have an event called a Crazy Town Future Lounge. Do, do I give you a character? Yeah. Uh, could you please tell our listeners what the event is about? We kind of already got that it's a bit about robotics and electronics and IE and stuff like that, but... More specifically. Well, as you probably know, the in, in Pori in this week, there's so much happening because we have Suomi Arena this week and we have Pori Jazz. So there's a lot of different organizations also doing their kind of own shade events and, and so. So we wanted to start our own as well. Well, our future launch is from Monday to Thursday from uh, 3 to 5. So we have some uh, discussions and networking and uh, like hang, hanging out with people. We have every day a different host. So on Monday we had Eddie Nation. They were uh, talking about how to get mm. yeah international like workforce to Finland mm. or students to Finland and uh, how to make it easier and how to get like companies to kind of understand that what's the benefit in having international know-how in Finland. And how to get the students stay here and yeah. not not just uh, study here, just, but how to stay here. Yeah, yeah. Today is Tuesday and we are having Hedai as our host and uh, they are talking about AI and upskilling. So how uh, artificial intelligence can help to uh, to really get a grip on our future and our educational future in, in Finland and, and so. Some description of this presentation was already given to me by Harry. Yeah. 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 And on Wednesday we'll have robotics as a team. The headline is like how robotics can have a positive impact for society, business and education. And it's really nice we have uh, international guests here also on the robotics team and so it's it's really interesting as well and thursday is our own day so it's uh hosted by crazy town and uh it's about uh new work and uh, how different projects can be meaningful and all kind of a future of work i would say the theme so yeah we had the first one and, and it was really nice i think people enjoyed it a lot and i hope the week will be the same Right. Uh, so, is it the first time the future launches? Yeah, mm. yeah. Then good luck with that. Yeah. I hope it goes well. And we have had mm. some practice with IGDA and and Hedai and different visitors coming to Pori on Suomi Arena week. So we had had some practice on on you know. Uh, getting these events here. Right, since you mentioned it, I know that you have been one of the founders of IGDA. Can you please tell a few things about this project? IGDA is an international game developers association, and it's actually based in US, and it's a global organization, so there's a lot of IGDA chapters around the world. And uh, in Finland, it's very active. Uh, we have this uh, Finnish chapter of IGDA here, and it's already been, I don't know for how many years it has been already, and it's uh, based in Helsinki, but it spread around a lot for different hubs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was a founder for uh, IGDA hub uh, here in Satakunta, in Pori, and we've been around since 2016. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, it's a network for game developers and all hobbyists who are interested in, in doing games and, and uh, students and, and so it's kind of a classical question, but still, in your opinion, what's specific about Pori or Satakunt business ecosystem compared to other parts of Finland? Or maybe to the universe? What's special about guys you hear? Maybe here is more robotic sectors, companies, and maybe also these artificial intelligence focused companies. But I don't know if you compare our companies other areas. I don't, I don't know exactly... What kind of companies are from 
example in, in Tampere or something. But Yeah, I think the robotics and automation sector is very strong here. And mm. well, we have traditional like industrial sectors a lot. I think we probably had some rough times already in the 80s and 90s. So we have already like gone through some uh, structural changes here before. So I think there's also a lot of new companies mm here and kind of young startup companies also that's kind of developed for uh, bigger bigger ones already still i mean like opening crazy town is kind of a sign for me that crazy town premises is kind of a sign for me that the region or the city is active uh, business like that there are startups and stuff so why do you think there was uh, this decision to have crazy town in Pori as well Well, city of Pori, I have been very interested about what we are doing here. So they are keeping here in, for example, today, uh, city of Pori will keep some uh, meeting here. Well, there are many, many things that we we have noticed that they they like this idea. So Yeah, and I think we had some like key companies that uh, wanted to get involved with Crazy Town and, and to build a community here. So I think that's one uh, essential factor and also the support from from Pori City and the development company Britstech and and so so we have like a lot of forces behind us also mm. like supporting. Do you feel like most companies who start here in Pori prefer to stay local and grow here? Well, I really try to push the companies when we do contracts here so we, I, I try to push them to visit Tampere and Helsinki and so on so they can find other companies and try to do business with them so I don't know is it I am pushing them away here or I am trying to grow them here or I, I don't know but I try to grow somehow yeah and I think uh, many of them have like international perspective as well But I also think that they have a pretty. They are keen in staying here as well, so they mm. kind of feel that Pori is a good-sized place to be, and and it's a good place to combine your work life and family life. So I think uh, going international is also like staying here, but still doing business internationally, and, and mm. so. Thank you very much for the interview and your hospitality, Kati and Petri. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And we continue with Pori episode of Tribecast Summer Tour. And our last but not least guest for this week is Harry Sominen. That's correct. Thank you so much for inviting me. So happy to be here. So my name is Harry. I actually come from Tampere, but my father is from Pori. So that's my <laughs> close link to this great city. And uh, yeah, I work as an uh, educational entrepreneur. And uh, basically, I went to study abroad in China 2005. And that's where we got with my good friend uh, idea to start to send students to study in Asia. So that's uh, when we came up with our first company called Asia Exchange back in 2007. And after that, we have established a couple of more companies in education. Right. And now you work in a startup called Edunation. That's correct. And the birth story for Edunation is basically that when it was 10-year anniversary for our first baby, which was this Asia Exchange company, this mighty eagle called Peter Westerbakka, known from Angry Birds. So uh, he saw this uh, newspaper, Aamulehti. There was a story about us, and he said that, hey, let's do the same that you have been doing 10 years, but uh, let's change the stream to Finland to get international students to study in Finland. So he said he had tried to do that with our government, But it was a little bit sticky, so he wanted to have a startup to do it. Right. So we figured out that you consider yourself a startup. Why? Startup. Well, it's a mindset. And I would say that my first company, Asia Exchange, is still more a startup than a corporation. It's not only about the size of the company, but it is the way how you're thinking and how cooperative you are, how lean you want to be. That's that's uh, being like a real entrepreneur who wants to make results Not only because of making your living, but you want to make an impact. So that's one of the justifications I call myself a startup or forever, I would say. Do you think that actually you can teach, not you personally, but in general, it's possible to teach someone how to do a startup since you're an educational person? And well, of course, you can work and be as an example. And I haven't 
met any entrepreneur who wouldn't like to share his or her story. The mistakes, the bottlenecks, the success stories. So uh, that's something that everybody wants to share. And I think those real life examples are something that teach you the most. Speaking of teaching and education, in your opinion, and it's bad for me to ask that question because I kind of know the answer from my own perspective, but still, why to come to Finland if you're an international student? Well, um, of course, as a Finn, we Finn quite often said, okay, why are you coming to Finland? Why on earth you are coming here? <laughs> well, uh, you just need to look off on these many rankings in many different areas of life that Finland is performing very well. And uh, we have a great education. We are the happiest country in the world. Do you believe in it? Yeah, well, of course, it's about what is happiness, but that's, I guess, a different subject to talk about. But uh, overall, the life quality is very good in Finland. And uh, we have uh, great universities here. I don't mean that they all would be in the high-ranked QS ranking or whatever, they are top 100, but uh, basically they can teach most of the skills that every, any student would need. And I would like to see Finland more international as well. So that's one of the ambition why we are doing what we are doing now. And Finland is also, well, we are one of the best English-speaking countries as well, and that's something that many people doesn't realize. So we really need to put Finland to the map first, Because not people, they are not waking up this morning and thinking, hey, I want to go to study in Finland. Somebody needs to tell this first. Just trying to think if it was the same thing for me, personal story. Can you name the partners you work with, like universities and educational organizations you work with? Sure. So, of course, you need to be very cooperative. It is in private sector, but also in public sector. So we everybody should have the same goal, same targets. We are at the moment working together with 11 Finnish is universities or University of Applied Sciences. Mm -hmm. So it is kind of one third of the universities that we have in Finland at the moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe in the future it will be more, but at the moment we need to focus with something, you know, limited amount of partners. In the future we want to see all the Finnish cities and universities getting more international. At the moment it is on average 7% international students at our universities, and it should be definitely much more. About your company, in a sense of what you actually do, do you only promote the education in Finland? Do you help the international students to find a specific program for them? How much help can the international student get? Well, of course, uh, the students are our main focus, and uh, we really want to make the overall experience, the user experience, I would say, uh, exceptionally good. So it starts everything from applying, and then getting this help already during uh, before you are entering to Finland, and then when you are here and then how you are merging together and uh, interacting with the local students and uh, companies and societies there's lots of uh, room to, for improvement in that and what happens after you are getting your degree then how to enter to the work life so that's something a big question we need to solve and especially in a little bit smaller cities in Finland where companies organizations are not that used yet to have like international talent but they really should open their eyes if they want to work globally, if they want to have international partners and customers, they need to have international workforce as well. So what happens after the students graduate? Do you connect them with companies or will you better stimulate them to have their own business or their own startup? It's a very good question. I think we should do both. We should encourage and uh, showcase them uh, like Schlush and uh, these startup societies that we have in, in Tampere, in Pori, in Helsinki, even in Turku and, and uh, many other cities. Yeah, uh, why not becoming an entrepreneur? Why not trying uh, running a company already during your studies? And once you graduate, maybe you already have a workplace to run because of your company, or then you have a real life experience which stands out in your CV and maybe some bigger company wants to hire you. So both of these options are there. And at the moment with Education, we are also with our partners generating this program called a Guaranteed Job Program, mm. where actually people who are coming to Finland, we are introducing them to the work life, not only to the studies from the beginning, mm -hmm. train them how to really apply for a job in Finland, and also train uh, the companies why they should hire first an intern from the international students and then at the end also hire them as an employees. So do I get it right that your basic idea that hiring an international 
intern or international student to work for you is about whether you want to go to the market abroad or is there any other reason to get an international to a team it's not the only only reason like why to hire an inter, international talent because it's also it helps you with the domestic markets as well and it doesn't mean that your company needs to go necessarily abroad because foreigners are also coming to finland and if you want to interact with them it's good if 